Greetings. My name is, well, my name's not important. I'm doing this video because um, I have some very, very good friends out there that want to know why I'm not a Christian anymore. Um, you know, certain friends and family members have been inquiring uh, because they want to know um, how come I'm, I don't go to church anymore. Uh, so I'm going to do this quick video and I feel like other people will be edified by it. Um, and so I just want to take you guys on a quick trip. Okay. Now, I'm sure just like other black people out there, they've had similar questions as I've had as I have had over the years. Some of the questions that I've had over the years is uh, as a people, why do we go through what we go through? What's the reason? Why are we at the bottom economically? Why uh, are we getting shot down in the street by the police, by each other, black on black violence? Um, why are we at the top of some of the most aggressive diseases that are out there? Why do we have to go through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of slavery? I've always had these questions and I'm sure a lot of you guys have had those same questions. Um, this is directly tied to how come I don't go to church anymore. So I just want to take you on a quick trip. I won't take up too much of your time. I promise. Um, so I have my Bible here. This is a King James Bible. Um, and I'm going to stick within one chapter. I'm going to go through several different uh, verses in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. Okay. Now you can put this on pause and go get your Bible if you're at home. But if you're out, you know, doing your thing, and you're just listening to this or looking at this, then just follow with me, okay? But this is the reason why um, I was able to get answers. God gave me answers to all of the questions that I've had, and I know that a lot of you guys have had, okay? So let's get right into it. So the book of Deuteronomy, of course, um, this is one of the books of Moses, and uh, it's a part of the Torah. Um, and so in chapter 28, he is talking to the Israelites. He's talking to the 12 tribes of Israel and he's letting them know like, Hey guys, um, well, I'll read. So verse one, chapter 28, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken or listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all of the commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee upon high above all nations. So he's letting them know, hey guys, if you do what you're supposed to do, if you follow God's laws, statutes, and commandments, he's going to set you on high above every other group of people on the whole earth. And so then Moses begins to go through all of the blessings. So I'll just go through a couple of them and then we'll get right down to the point. Okay. So in uh, verse three, he says, blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, your children, and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of the cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of the sheep. Blessed shall thou be, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store, so your business. Blessed shall thou be when you come in, blessed shall thou be when you go out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come in against you one way, and they shall leave seven ways. So he's going, he's just letting them know, hey, if you do what you're supposed to do, these are all the blessings that are going to happen to you guys. Now, we're going to skip over to verse 15. Okay, this is the flip side. He's going to start to talk about the curses that's going to befall these people and their children for generations if they don't listen to the Most High. So he starts by saying, in, again, 
Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass if thy will not listen unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thy basket and thy store be. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of the land and your cattle and thy sheep. The curses go on and on and on, right? Now, this is the thing. From this point, Deuteronomy chapter 28 gets a little bit uh, deeper and it really starts to um, show you exactly who these people are. You'll see what I mean. Let's jump down to De Deuteronomy 28 uh, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thy shall build a house, and thy shall not dwell in. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thy shall not gather the grapes thereof. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Let's jump down to 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Who is this starting to sound like? What group of people is this starting to sound like? Let's continue. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thy hand. The fruit of, your, the fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Wow, this is starting to sound like a certain group of people right here that we're all familiar with, right? Something that a lot that, that one group of people went through. I'm gonna keep going. This is again Deuteronomy chapter 28, uh, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall send thee. A byword. Do you know what a byword is? You know, let's, I'm just going to keep it real. The byword that uh, we have been called throughout the nations is nigger. That's a byword. I'm going to keep going. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. This is starting to sound like slavery. I'm going to read that again. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Walk with me here, people. Walk with me here. Okay? I'm, I'm going to get right down to the point. Okay? This is Deuteronomy 28, uh, 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, in all wants of things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Who is this talking about? What group of people is this talking about? I don't ever remember seeing uh, any photos or, or seeing uh, or reading any history of any other nation other than Negroes, other than black people that went through slavery, that had their sons and daughters taken from them and gone into captivity with yokes of iron on their necks. But let's keep going. Verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar. 
from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flies. A nation from afar as swift as the eagle flies. Hmm. What nation's national symbol is an eagle? Let's keep going. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So, a nation whose language that you will not understand. I wonder what language that is. Could that be English? Let's keep going. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance. Which shall not regard the person of the old, neither show sure favor to the young. Okay. You know what? Let's skip over to 54. So that the man that is a tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil towards his brother. Let's back that up. So that a man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. That sounds like black on black violence to me. But let's keep going. And toward his wife, the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. You didn't get that. I'm going to read it again. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Who is this describing? What group of people is this describing? Be real with yourself. Let's keep going. You know what? Let's get right down to the point. Deuteronomy 28 verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. From one end of the earth even to another. And there you shall serve other gods. Okay, again, and the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth to the other, the other. And there you're going to serve other gods, which neither your fathers have known, even wood and stone. What gods are that? What two gods are that? The wood and the stone. Think about it. The wood. That's Christianity. That's the cross. The stone. That's Islam. Every year, isn't there a pilgrimage that goes to uh, circle the stone, that big cube of Kabbalah? This is talking about how black people were scattered across the world through the transatlantic slave trade. And when we get there, we're going to serve other gods. Wood and stone, Christianity and Islam. But let's keep going. And among these nations shall you find no ease. Neither shall the sole of your feet have rest. But the Lord shall give you a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before you. Hmm. Thy life shall hang in doubt before you okay and thou shalt fear day and night and thou shalt have no assurance of thy life you won't have any assurance of your life this sounds like a certain group of people to me in the morning you will say lord i wish it was evening and at evening you will say god i wish it was morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Now, we're about to get right to the point. Okay. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Did you know that the transatlantic slave trade is in the Bible? You didn't know that, did you? Well, I found out and this is it. Get your Bible. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Right. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How did they get to Egypt the first time? They walked over. 
Egypt is not far from Israel. Wait a second. So they're going to go into captivity again with ships. This time with ships. Tell me about another group of individuals that went into captivity, went into slavery via ships. Okay, but I'm, I'm going to keep going here. And the Lord shall bring thee into captivity again with ships by the way whereof I spoke unto thee. Thou shalt not see it no more again. You will not see your homeland again. And there, there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, that's slave men, and bond women. Bond women, that's slave women, and no man shall redeem you. That's the transatlantic slave trade, people. Now, that's Deuteronomy 28, chapter 28. You can read these blessings and cursings on your own. So that's not going to be a problem for you. I'm going to tell you what my problem was. Once I saw this, once I saw that this described my people, my ancient forefathers, I then began to, I got a little angry. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. I got a little angry because throughout the 20 years that I've been in the Christian church, they never showed us this. They taught us that the law was done away with. So that keeps you out of the Old Testament. Right? You stick to the New Testament. Most, most, a lot of believers do. Right? A lot of Christians do. I want to know how come they never showed me who I am. But what they did do is they told me that I was a Gentile. I thought that God's chosen people were those people that are in Israel right now, the Jewish people. That's a lie. We are God's chosen people, Negroes, black people. What I just read to you don't describe no other nation on the planet Earth. Throughout history, it don't describe nobody else but us. So, my question to you is, people, you go to church. What would happen if the pastor got up in front of 10,000 people on a Sunday and read Deuteronomy 28 like I just did to the people? And show them who they really are. What will happen? You know what will happen? Same thing happened to me. They would leave. They'd leave the church. A lot of them would leave. Simply because they would probably feel like how I kind of feel. Like they were lied to. Like they were deceived. Like they, like they didn't. They was not told the truth about who they are. Black people, you are. The chosen people of the Most High God. You are the 12 tribes of Israel. More specifically, if you are a descendant from slaves in, here in America, you are from the tribe of Judah. Because the Bible talks about Judah was scattered. Okay, if you do your research, you'll see that Judah was scattered across the four corners of the earth. We were told we were from Africa. This is the reason why. This is the reason why I don't go to church anymore. I refuse to be deceived any longer. I refuse to follow all of the pagan holidays that we've been following. There's holidays set up in the...